Hey there, welcome to the virtual table. We're going to be playing this game called Paladin's Oath. <clears throat> and if you've never heard of this game before, it is Mage Knight without the license. That's the best way to describe it. Uh, the It's by, made by a single uh, developer, so it's a one-man show who made this. So it's going to be a little quirky, uh, but I think it's an awesome app. And it's on Steam, if you're looking for where to get it. Uh, I think it's around $15 right now on Steam. <clears throat> and I highly recommend it. And I know um, there's a raging IP debate, you know, in several places over this game. Uh, I look at it as, you know, if the, the people who have the Mage Knight license like this enough, this guy might be able to be their developer, right? And change convert the assets who knows but for now there is no Mage Knight the video game so uh, as far as I'm concerned it's not a big deal and this is not Mage Knight let me make it clear although a lot of the game mechanics are the same um, it does have some variations I think this is actually harder than Mage Knight and some of you might might like that um, in fact I just played a game and I, I failed to win and usually I can <clears throat> I can pull it off with that said, um, I know, uh, yeah, let's just dive in and go. So, uh, I think you're going to enjoy this journey. So, uh, you're hearing silence because there is music in this game, and then there's also like an expansion pack where you can buy the music. So, I'm assuming he has some kind of copyrights on that. So, I don't want to play those on YouTube and violate the copyrights, which is funny because we just finished talking about IP stuff. But, um, anyways, I'm still trying to do the right thing here. Um, it does have a codex which lists, you know, everything in, in, a, in a day. Um, so, you're going to see things that are uh, similar to Mage Knight. I cannot show you this game without comparing it to Mage Knight. And if you've never played Mage Knight before, this game's going to make no sense to you at all. Um, but it has all the similar concepts, like the poison, the paralyzing, um, the range attack, savage attack, siege attack. Uh, all those things are in there. Um, let's see. Uh, the different types of blocking, fortifications. Um, it's got the different colored mana, just like you would expect in a game. Um, this is the part where it drives you nuts the most. This is the bestiary. So which one of these is the equivalent of the of the uh, goblin? And that would be one of these vermlings here. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I don't know which one. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe... Well, no. This one has two attacks. So this one... I, I honestly don't know which one would be the equivalent of the goblin. Would it be the brutalisk? Um, or maybe the bulwark? Anyways, uh, it doesn't have to be the equivalent. I'm just trying to say uh, this is the hardest part to get used to, but if you study each of these, <clears throat> you'll see that there's a lot of similarities between this and um, the Mage Knight. And of course, Abominations are the, uh, these are the toughest guys you run into, and they are very tough. The Abyssals are not very fun either. Um, uh, these Ancients... I'm sorry, this this actually might be tougher, these agents. Um, I faced a few of those and many of those. Okay. They they do have, like, all the different cards. Uh, they're going to look very familiar to you uh, if you're a Mage Knight person. And um, they even have the base game starting characters or the equivalent of them. And then these are the, um, the different followers you could get that are the the silver and then these are the gold and I don't remember what the uh, it, this is the arcane council I can't remember what the other one was called I think it was like the citadel council or whatever but you can see a lot of similarities uh, between um, these and you know in the board game <coughs> and uh, oh that's interesting this follower has been encountered before Oh, has never been encountered. So there's certain followers that I never had yet in my game. All right, well, let's just show you the game. So when you do a new game, 
Uh, this is the equivalent of the Mage Knight where you just need to find the first Citadel, and the moment you find it, the game ends. Um, this is great for when you're learning the game, and they give you an experience point for every exploration tile. Um, this is just like the Mage Knight the board game. The, uh, the beginner mission. Uh, Holy War. All the uh, Citadels must be conquered before the end of the round. And... Um, I honestly don't know how this one is different than Epic Conquest. I do notice that the difficulty is a 2, and the duration is a 3, whereas with Epic Conquest, the difficulty is a 3, and the duration is a 4. But you can see here, all the citadels must be conquered before the end of the round. Um, same, same concept. I'm wondering if this is more like Mage Knight, because I actually was commenting that I thought this was super hard. When I played, this is the mode I played, Epic Conquest, and uh, I defeated two of the four citadels, and I was just getting ready to beat the third when my time ran out. I I couldn't knock them all out. I was able to get a, a good bit of them, but not all of them. So, um, yeah, I think this would be like the equivalent of Mage Knight. Uh, we'll see. Um, and then Last Bastion is uh, there's one last citadel. And it's a heavily guarded citadel. So it's a little bit lighter. Um, and then this Rise of the Ancients is there's roaming ancients that have to be defeated before the last round. Um, dragons and other ancient creatures. So this is like uh, the developer went off and made his own, you know, stuff. So this is not from the board game at all. Um, you might think that this is from um, the first expansion of the Mage Knight, but it's not. Um, okay. So what's the difference between these two? We, we can see here. Um, so if we do Epic Conquest, which is the one I did, the uh, you can see here it has three, six, nine days long. The last two days are nighttime, which I don't remember um, uh, Mage Knight being that way, but sure, that's just the way it works. And then uh, you could do wide or tight. So wide, of course, being like this, or tight meaning you got to go straight out. Uh, what I found interesting about this is that they give you enough tiles to fill up everything, of course, and I needed to go to every dang tile. So I, I went like this way, and then I went this way, and I had all these explored, and then I had to go all the way back to f these final two. Um, that's part of the reason I didn't do well. Um, blessings are your uh, special skills. So this is just like the board game. Ambient mana is the amount of uh, mana that you're going to roll. And uh, that's the common pool that you choose from. Um, for whatever reason, I thought that was three last time. But you can set it to however you like. Um, and then, of course, how many followers are going to be in the market. Um, one thing I think is really cool about this game is, like, you know, maybe I want... I want more mana choices, right? I, You can do that. Um, maybe you want more followers in the market because you want to be able to pick exactly the guy you want to pick. Um, but obviously, this is, uh, this is the board game rules. Now, if you remember uh, the WizKid Towers for the Citadels, or the Cities, I think they were, you can see here, like, a 4 is easy, an 8 is medium, and an 11 is hard. So you can see that there's like basically just slightly harder than easy, two mediums, and slightly harder than medium. And uh, to be honest with you, this, this kicked my butt. I was able to get the first one no problem, and then these next two were a challenge, and this last one was just like, oh my gosh, there's no way I can do it. Um, so there's that. Uh, the Benedictions... Oh, yeah. The benedictions are the um, the numbered cards, right? Whenever you start a round, you know, if it's daytime or nighttime, you have different numbered cards, and, you know, one of them lets you draw two extra cards, for example. Um, this is just the rules around that. Almost everything that's default is Mage Knight. And then uh, this is just picking who the dummy player is going to be, and that will uh, dictate, like, what kind of skills you might end up drawing. So you would do that here. Okay, so... 
mentally keep track of there's nine days and nights and then five eight eight nine so then let's go back and let's try holy war look at that it's six days oh there's only two citadels so it's half half the citadels in six days time uh, although the ambient mana and followers market that number changed which is interesting um, let's do epic conquest it that's always the most fun way to play so yeah we got four we got three all right so here is the next part you have your classic mage knight characters um, I don't remember the names of all of them but there was the one who had a lot of the frost skills that is this character anathema anathema um, if you look at her blessings here you can see there's the uh, frost attack the fire or frost block reduce each armor by one and then uh, her special cards that are in here is cold mastery right so she's the one that had all the frost abilities now here's the part that I thought um, was pretty awesome he added this concept called oaths so this oath here and all of them have like a basic oath like this this is um, and, and he says default this is like Mage Knight the board game I mean you don't have any oaths in Mage Knight the board game so this is a whole new concept for this but like let's say you know you want to try a really epically hard um, campaign but you also want a little bit of help right you know you can't do it just from scratch so he's got this cool thing where you have the oath of devotion so you start the game with two cardinals uh, followers that are in your party <clears throat> and you also start with this blessing which is you know one of the skill tokens already revealed and then every round you can get a bonus of of one reputation so you're just gonna have one reputation automatically every round and then every beginning, every day and night, you get one white mana crystal. How cool is that? I mean, so he just basically came up with this concept of, you know what, I'm going to give you some some stuff. And then and then now you could crank up the, the difficulty of the mission. And maybe that'll balance it out a little bit more. I, I think that is super duper cool. And then you got multiple oaths to choose from. This one's the Oath of Conquest. You get these two dudes with you. And then you get plus five movement every round. This is one I absolutely love. Because <laughs> movement's always a pain in the butt. And here you just have the Oath of Abundance, where you get bonus mana every round. And back to normal. I don't know what combined build means. Um, I really don't. I mean, if I do this, and then this. Oh, oh, I see, I see. It's just combining the character plus the Oath. Okay, fair enough. All right, so this is the uh, Frost character um, that you usually have. This guy is your nature one. So I don't remember the name of it, but there was like this nature chick. So like, for example, he heals, and it tells you, he scouts, heals, defends, and you can see he's got like, remove a resistance or fortification. You know, so he's got those abilities. And then um, the next one, this is your Charisma guy. There was that guy that had all the bonus leadership or the, the Picard of the Star Trek one. That's this guy. So um, he has the, uh, you can see he's got the leadership card bonuses. He has a bunch of leadership cards that help him to recruit and do things of that nature. Oh, excuse me. And, and the oaths do change, by the way. So like he's got different oaths. So this one, he gets two extra follower slots plus one reputation, and then every round he gets one, and then he also gets five leadership. So he, this is awesome. What a better what better way to to suit this character, right? Because that's what he likes to do anyways. And then you got um, this one is similar. That's similar. And then if we go back to like this one. Um, has one where these uh, get some bonus mana and then yeah some of them are similar and then um, last but not least or no I'm sorry there's there's more 
So then there's this Tenzin character um, who seems to have a lot of spells and abilities. I can't remember who this is... Uh, um, which one this is uh, similar to. I thought you started... I thought Mage Knight, the base game, only had four characters. Uh, this game has five. So I can't remember which one uh, this one is based off of. But I do know this one. Uh, this is the one that... Uh, you need to, if you have wound cards in your hand, you can discard a wound and you gain stuff. So, like uh, here, you can heal up to two wounds from your hand, um, discard a wound to get move leadership or whatever, uh, discard a wound to gain red or black mana, you know. So, this is the character that lets you, you know, do a lot with wounds. And I, I it's a, it's the chick that has the red, you know, because they're painted miniatures in the board game. I, I should go get them and, and, and be more knowledgeable than I currently am. And she's got the unique one where she starts the game with these blessings. She gets double chaos attack of two and a chaos block of two. I mean, that's pretty darn good. Just the fact that she has anything chaos, but her reputation is minus seven. So you basically want to go in and just burn. <laughs> um, what an awesome... I, I love this concept of the oaths. I, I can't stress enough that it just... like. This would have been a fantastic expansion pack for Mage Knight, the board game. It really would. Um, so well well done to the guy who uh, did this. Um, I'm only familiar with playing this character uh, because this is the one I typically do. Um, so uh, I'm going to play him again, but I do want to try the other ones. I really, really do. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and get going here. And so, yeah, we're not going to mess with anything here. Um, this one is sort of important because we could be like, okay, uh, I think I picked her last time, so I was able to take some of her skills. I, I think I took uh, this one right here, for example. I had the Frost Attack of two, and that was actually very helpful to me. Um, I also took her offering, this one. But maybe I want uh, Zario so I can get her uh, Siege Attack or, you know, heal some wounds. Uh, so that's what you can do. And the dummy player is very hidden in this game. You don't get to see how many cards are left in his deck or anything. Um, that's probably a, a gripe I have. But um, And then, of course, there's don't use a timer, which means you get um, you go until you, you use your deck. And so you don't have to use a dummy player. Um, one of the reasons I lost is I was taking too long. And I still had cards left in my deck, and I just had to keep resting because I, I had wounds and I was resting to get rid of my wounds, and I still had a lot of cards in my deck. And so, um, uh, the dummy player's deck ran out before me, and that's what ended up causing um, me to get cut short. But, anyways, a dummy player is always fun to have. Uh, you know what? This is there is a character in the game that has, um, crystal manipulation. I actually think this might be my favorite character, now that I realize it. I mean, I love the Picard character for Star Trek. Don't get me wrong. The the Picard character in Star Trek is huge, because leadership does so much more in Star Trek than it does in uh, this game. Although this game does have a lot of leadership stuff. This Tenzin is the, the one I like, because uh, there's the, basically this character, like all these things, you can basically just keep grabbing mana. And that's what I like about it. So you could use the advanced side of your dice, or, or your cards. All right, Tenzin's a pretty awesome one. Uh, we might pick him. Yeah, we'll pick Tenzin. He'll be the guy. All right, so just like classic Mage Knight, um, what do I want to do? I, I always like to do Well Rested. Let's start the game with two extra cards. So we're going to do that. And the two extra cards is Goodberry and Fury. And there's our cards. Okay, so the information in this game is going to seem awkward at first because it was developed by one guy, and I'm not making that as an excuse, but, but it is the explanation. Uh, he did a fantastic job once you learn it. So a couple of things. If I hit this explore button, um, or if I had like a, if I picked a card that, that had like, you know, 
you get to do something here, like reroll mana dice or something. I have to do it right here on this screen now, or otherwise I don't get to go back. So, so that's one of the things with this. The, the second one is it does show you which day you're on out of the nine that are out there. And basically, um, the estimated number of turns is going to be four for this round. Um, it does go up as you go. The other thing is, is this, of course, is your armor for your character, um, your level, and then it tells you what's going to happen when you level up and how many experience points you need. And then right here is your reputation. If you're wondering where your reputation track is, just hover your mouth o mouse over this, and this is that neutral and etc. And uh, uh, our current location, of course, is identified here. Uh, you can show the map before you explore so you can see where you are. Uh, this is the mana roll, so you can see what mana is out there. And this is how much, of course, I can use every turn. Um, and uh, we rolled a black, so that's why uh, one of them is missing. Um, we can use cards, followers, or blessings to generate mana. Um, Everything here is more just trying to be tutorial-wise. So what's important here is I have seven cards in my hand. My hand size is five. So that's how I know what my hand size is. There are nine cards left in my deck, so I can see how many more there are. Um, and in fact, if you click on it, it'll show you what cards are left in your deck. So really, really cool, right? Um, he did a fantastic job. So uh, if you see a red number here, that's wounds. So if I have a wound in my hand, it would have a red one. I think in parentheses. Um, if I have wounds in my deck, it'll tell me. I have like three wounds in my deck, or even how many I have in my discard pile. This will let me look at my followers, and here you can see I have one empty slot. And then these are your blessings, which are the uh, the skill tokens that you get when you level up. Um, now, for the market, uh, again, the market is, you know, when you're playing the game, the market's like laid out in front of you. The market is here. You have your three ability cards. I think the leftmost one is the one that disappears, you know, when you move to the next round. And then here's your three spells. And then here's your followers. And I use this little Radiant Servant. and He actually was quite decent. Um, he, uh, I use him exclusively for the heal here. His uh, Refresh a Follower only works for the low level guys and that's not all that good. But the heal was super nice uh, in the early game and I actually used him all the way to the end. Um, so then, uh, and the other one here is the Crepter, and you can see he has a range attack of one. Other followers get plus one to their attacks, and then reduce an enemy armor and attack by one. So I can't remember what exactly follower this one lines up with, but these are all almost cookie cutter copies of, you know, from the Mage Knight. Okay, well, let's get going. Let's hit explore. Alright, so the cards that are in your hand are here, and you click this button here to bring it up and back. So um, so that's one thing. The market, if you're ever trying to remember what's in the market, you can do that. And bear with me. I feel like the, uh, the volume is just a tad too loud for me. Maybe it is not going to be so bad for you. Now, uh, oh, one thing, when you hit escape, uh, the developer added a restart turn. So if you realize that you're just totally screwed up your turn, um, you know, in a board game, you can retcon it. That's exactly what you can do here. There's a restart turn. It'll take you back to the beginning of your turn, and you can uh, go from there. there. There is no way to save your game, so you, you know, you can't save scum it, but it's perfect. I mean, you know, you, you can go and you know, experiment. Hey, I think I can take that citadel down. And usually you have to sit there and math it all out. Well, this allows you to attack the citadel and then you realize this isn't going to work. I can't defeat the citadel. Then you just restart the whole turn and then just choose to do something different. Okay, so um, I brought up the cards. Bring your cards up. This will bring up your followers and then, of course, your skills. And you, you just click on anything to go from there. Um, the other weird thing about it is this is like your what you've accumulated. So um, if I play a card that gives me five leadership, five leadership shows up up here, 
and then the game's waiting for me to spend that leadership. So, so this is almost like your resource counters, um, and then your movement points will show up up here. Um, the other thing that's weird is the um, it's trying to show you the the phases of your turn. So you're going to do movement, you're going to interact with something, but then your turn ends. But if you want your turn to end like now, you have to click here. I I kid you not, I spent 10 minutes wondering where the end turn button was. <laughs> it's right here. All you have to do is click on that phase up there. And in fact, you click on these phases to move from one to the next to the next. It does an awesome job of showing you you have four of the, the green tiles and then eight of the citadel tiles. And remember, of those eight citadel tiles, only four of them actually have a citadel. But they would also have the advanced units. And then um, just another basic Mage Knight rule, you have to unlock at least one yellow tile in order to um, to start getting the yellow uh, uh, minions for hire, which are the really good ones, right? You want to hire the really good guys. Well, uh, you got to get at least one yellow tile to do that. So the only way you get to one yellow tile is we have to explore five zones because there's four zones of green that are going to be revealed. And ideally, you want to be able to, and by the way, ASDF works here. And ideally, you want to just go bam, bam, and like explore in one direction, get all the greens up there, and then all the yellows would be, you know, somewhere else. Um, and then it tells you your environmental effects, etc. Um, here's your ambient mana again, and then your inventory here will be your crystals. So, um, so this is the game. Uh, it should look very familiar to you. The movement points are written right on the uh, the board, and it even shows you what at nighttime that's going to flip flip to five. Uh, these are your roaming monsters, and we'll get into those in a second. Uh, this is the um, I don't remember what they're called before, but this is where you can heal your wounds, uh, just one if you end your turn there, and it gives you a gold mana during the day or a black mana at night. And then this is your classic village and you can see your three actions you can do and it tells you up here the stuff you can do at a village so all those cards in mage knight where you're like okay what can i do at a village it's all right right around here it's wonderful 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 um now one thing i never remember is i gotta look at the market and if you look at the followers it tells you this guy can be recruited at crack and this is village or temple village or temple so if i want one of these radiant servants again Let's go to a village, right? So that might be a nice goal. And look at this, I got one, boom, boom, right here is a village. So maybe we can do that. Um, oh, I never saw this one before. It's a hideout. You battle with enemies lurking there and you loot their crystal stash. So we're gonna get a random mana, random mana, and there's gonna be one abomination in there. Obviously we don't know what that's gonna be. Um, this is your spire, which is the mage towers from, from Mage Knight, because you can go here and you can recruit spells. Another roaming monster. Uh, this should look familiar. The mines uh, are pretty much the same. And that's all we see so far. Now, this looks very attractive, but the 555 does not. Now, at nighttime, those turn into threes, so that's not so bad. So maybe we can go attack and attack, uh, come over here and hire our healer, and then maybe end the turn here. I don't know if I can take it or, uh, that would be a tall order. Um, but let's see what we can do. So I think I maybe wanna attack this guy, but let's look at our cards now. So the cards are, I have a heal card, which is too early in the game to get. Um, got some move. Mana manipulation, attack, and a leadership. So I basically got a bunch of nothing. Or, I, yeah, I'm jack of all trades. I got a little bit of everything and not enough of something. So the only thing that gives me straight up movement is this one. And then I'm giving up my range attack. But that's sort of okay. But let's look at this guy. So here's your Rampaging Monster. Actually, this looks like the Goblin in some ways. Um, but it is fortified, so that's not quite Goblin level. Um, physical attack is three. 
he's going to give me a reputation and I gain two experience points and he's fortified which means he's immune to uh, range attack. Uh, siege attacks work but not range. He's not too bad. Alright, well let's do this. I'm going to, since he's immune to range, I don't need this range card. So I'm going to go ahead and move, move there. And I went a little bit too fast. So... I can't undo it. I'd have to restart the round now. But um, I, I wanted to show you that when I clicked on this, the little two movement points showed up up here. And then of course I spent it too fast because I moved. Sorry, bad habits. Now, one of the things in the rules that I always forgot in the board game is if you click on this guy, you can taunt him and he'll come and attack you right where you're standing. So let's do that. All right, so um, we control the phases up here. So right now we're in before battle. So this is where we can cast any before battle spells, uh, anything we want. Um, I don't think I have anything to do and of course I don't have any followers. Um, so I'm gonna go into the range attack phase, which again, I can't do anything. So let's go to the block phase. Okay, I have an attack four, which will kill him. Uh, the question is, can I block him? <laughs> and if I wanna use, by the way, this is for when you wanna turn the card sideways to get plus one something. So I could try to block him here. I'd have to spend three cards to block this guy. Uh, because I don't have any actual block commands, except for this one up here is a block two. But if I do that, then I need to find a way to attack him three times. I do have this, uh, which is an interesting card, but I don't have a green mana. Um, so that's not a real uh, viable option. I do have turn one mana of any basic color into a crystal. And the way that works is I'm turning a white mana into a white crystal. I, it's not like I get to change it change the color. Um, this of course lets me use an additional. So what do I want to do? Now I could do this one here where I'm going to spend a blue to gain any color I want. So that is an option. I think I'm going to just take my wounds. I really do. I have a heal card so there's no reason not to take my wounds. So I need a green mana, and so I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to gain a mana crystal of my choice, and I'm going to take a green mana crystal. And then you have to do this to play the boom, blue mana, and then boom, the blue mana is depleted, and I got a green crystal. And I'm going to ignore the block, and you can see I'm going to take two wounds. So now if you go back to the block phase and click on this, it'll totally tell you that you're going to get two wounds. And just a refresher, if you guys aren't familiar with Mage Knight, it's your armor. So he's doing three attack minus your armor. So three minus two, there's one left. So you take one wound. Then he's going to minus two again, right? So let's say it was five attack. He would do five minus two. You'd have three left. You take one, one wound. Even though there's three left, you take one wound. And then that three that's left, you subtract two again. And now you have one left, so you take a second wound. You see how that works? Now, you might be wondering, why is it that you have two wounds? If you don't completely block him, it's you get a wound immediately, and then you start that math exercise of reducing it by your armor. So, so to repeat again, I'm gaining a wound immediately, then I'm doing three minus two, and I get one left, so I get a second wound, and then I have the one left minus two, and then I'm back to zero, no more wounds. If this was five, I would get one wound right away. I would subtract two from it and get the three, so I'd have a second wound. I'd subtract two from it, I'd have one, I would get a third wound, and I'd subtract two, and now I'm done. So I would have three wounds from a five damage attack. So hopefully that makes some sense. Um, and that's what they're basically doing here, even though um, it doesn't explain it at all. That's what I'm saying. If you've never played Mage Knight, this game's going to drive you nuts. Um, but that's the deal. I'm going to take two wounds, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to accept the two wounds. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the attack phase. And now that's why you see the two wounds in my hand. And and you could go back and forth. It's a beautiful game that way. So you could retcon, you know, and change your mind. 
Um, what a wonderful job this guy did. Um, so, I took a green, but I need a red to kill him, because you can see here he has three armor, so I have to do three damage to him. This only does two. So I'm going to use this, use one additional ambient mana, and then I'm going to use this to use the red one. And then what it does is it shows up here that I have physical attack of four. And then I have to click on it and hold it and then drag it over and drop it in. And boom, I just did four damage to this guy. He's defeated and it even showed the experience points go up. I don't even level up with this jerk. Oh, come on. So now I'm going to click on after battle. It gives you a little summary. Your status. And then you end your turn. So it's saying this will commit, and I say yes. Okay, so I ended my turn. I got my two wounds and three cards. And, and here you can see the red number two showing up. Now it's going to draw back up to my hand size, which is five. But you can see I'm already at five, so I won't get any more cards. Do I want to discard? No. So I'm at a new turn. And yes, I want to explore. And I'm going to go ahead and play this card right now. And I want, it's asking me which effect do I want. I want heal two. I'm going to spend my green mana, which is, I'm going to spend the gold mana. I'm going to keep this in my inventory. Let's spend the gold mana, activate, and then I just click on this and say I want to heal two cards and then boom, there they go. So pretty awesome, right? Um, so I healed the two that I took. Now I want to fight this guy next. And here you can see he has fire resistance. So it's really hard to block him. So unless I block him, or no, he, never mind. He has physical attack. It's, he's fire resistant, which doesn't hurt us at all. <laughs> um, He'll give two experience points and we'll finally level up with this jerk. So I gotta move one more time. And I'm thinking I wanna move this way. And um, do I have the movement cards though? And the answer is no, I do not. So I may have to end my turn and all I did was heal. That's okay. Um, but remember, there's only four turns in a round typically. The problem is there's not much I can do. I mean, I, I only get one movement point and I need three. Ah, uh, so yeah, I gotta end my turn. That's the problem with the wounds. Yep, so I'm gonna end my turn. I'm not gonna discard any cards. And here we go, I'm up to five. And you can see they're estimating the rounds to be two. All right, so I got several leadership cards, two of them in fact. So there's a lot of incentive to get to that village so I can recruit somebody. The problem is I do want to kill that guy. I would like to level up before that happens. Now, I still have this green crystal. I got some move cards here. Um, I hate to do it, but there's no point in holding that crystal. So we're going to go ahead and move three to here. And then we're going to taunt this guy into attacking us. So same deal. I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, uh, block him. Uh, he does three damage, but like even if I use this, I'm only going to gain one physical block, one physical block. Unless you block the whole thing, the whole attack goes through. There's no such thing as partially blocking with this. So, um, I could, I guess, use the range attack three. Oh, hold on. That's what we do. We range attack this guy. Oh, he's got four armor. You jerk. <laughs> and there's no such thing as partially damaging him either. Oh, oh, we were one off. I thought it was, I was looked at this three and I thought that was his armor. He's got four armor. Not enough. 
Okay, yeah, so see here, he's going to do three damage to us, which is going to cause one wound. I could block, block, block. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So there you go. I completely blocked him. And now we go to the attack. Oh, that's why. I can't kill him. Look, I have no cards left. I have no more attack. He, he, here, I show you. I can't kill him. There's nothing left. So I can't do that. So I can just go back. And then I can click. Click. And click. And then basically it undid everything. Isn't that awesome? Totally awesome. All right, so we did the range attack of three. Yeah, so I have to let him do the two wounds to me again. And um, and then for this one, I'm going to go ahead and add another attack. And then this shows that he's dead. And you can see we've leveled up. That's the plus sign. And we're going to go ahead and go to the after battle. So now we leveled up. So uh, we get to select an action card. I'm not a big fan of sacrificing cards. I can sacrifice an action card to take an advanced action of the same color from the market. To the discard, and this is to the hand. Sacrifice an action card to gain two crystals of the same color discarded. Or arcane mimicry. Discard a card to copy the effects of a spell. I like the idea of discarding more than sacrificing. Yeah, we'll take that one. And then here we get to draw our skills. They call them blessings. Most exciting part of the game right here. Oh. Having permanent leadership is really nice, folks. But not as nice as getting green and white mana. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm I'm torn, to be quite honest. But yeah, we're going to we're going to do this. <laughs> Alright, so that's the end of the turn. We got the two wounds in our hand, so we're only going to get one card. And they're saying we got roughly one turn left. So I could rest, which will get rid of the two wounds, and give me two more cards. Because uh, you can see here that I don't have... So I have discard a copy... a card to copy the effects of a spell from the market of the same color as the card. That's just copy the effects. This is to gain a spell of that color from the market to your discard pile. This is really good. And look at this. We got two blues and a white. So what's our cards again? We do have a white one over here. So we could get rid of this so like this one would be really nice to get the experience and the reputation. Um, but if we discard that, we could gain a white spell. This levitate spell, it's just teleport. Although I, I really like this one more. Hmm. So, or we don't use it this round, and instead we're going to rest. Yes, let's rest. We're going to get rid of those two wounds. Oh, I have to discard a card. That disappoints me. I always forget about that. Oh no, that was all the cards we had! <laughs> that was... Total oh no, I'm sorry. I w Here we go. There we go, I got some blue cards. That's what I'm looking for. Although the blue card I was looking for is also a move card. 
Uh, okay, let's explore. I need a load of movement points to get there. We're going to go ahead and do this to gain a spell, because that's too powerful. So we're going to acquire a blue spell from the discard pile. I'm going to pay a blue mana. Oh, it's the mana color. Yeah, I can't do that. Why can't I do that? Because I'm spending a blue mana. So all I can do is get the white mana. Here, let's do it. We still got to do it. So we're going to spend... Oh, this is such a crappy card. I need to have a crystal. Or otherwise this doesn't do me any good. Oh, no. So we're going to go ahead and move four. And I need to move five. So we're going to go ahead and discard... I could have used my leadership big time. So we could have gone here and used our leadership to heal those uh, wounds. We could have done all kinds of stuff. So let's try to recruit followers. It only costs two, and we already have one because of our reputation. So I only needed one leadership. But let's look at our cards here. I don't have the ability to use the white, but I could use this to at least get one XP. And here we go. We just recruited our first follower. And there he is. He's not a bad one. Having the ability to heal is pretty good. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and end our turn in the village. We gain experience point. And here we go. The end of the round has been announced. So we're going to go ahead and sleep. And now we're moving to nighttime. So, which one do we want to do? I'm going to reroll two ambient mana. If your deck is empty, you can activate this ability to put three cards back into your deck. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, so this is our starting hand. You can see we got our leadership card again. And we don't have any white mana though. But we do have this. So, some cool options. I didn't pay attention to the followers that are in the market. So these are the followers that are available. So like, for example, I can get this tracker. However, um, I would lose my healer dude if I did that. I also could get this battle hammer, which he actually looks pretty cool. So, um, this leadership card right now doesn't do me any good. Uh, this, as you can see, has an enemy in it. That is pretty nasty. Um, so he's never fortified. So even though he's inside of something, uh, the fortification bonus doesn't happen. He has seven armor. So we got to do seven damage to this guy. And he's going to attack us with three and then three again. And it's savage, which means that he does double damage. So it's actually six and six if we don't block it. And then if we do block it, we have to block it twice. We have to do a three block once and then a three block again. So I can't just do like a single card that does like five block. Uh, that single five block card would only block one of those threes. And I would not have the two points left over for the other three. So um, it would be nice to do, but that is a tough little cookie there. Even with my range attack, he has 7 health. We can block, so I guess this is a perfect example. I can do a block 5, I'm only going to block one of them. Uh, but that still might be good enough. I 
I don't have any attack other than this three. I would have to do seven damage. I just don't have it, folks. I can gain a Greek crystal. So the white mana, if I don't use it, I lose it. Hmm. I have no movement cards. I mean, I do, but that's my, also my attack card. I need to level up one more time before I can recruit again. I'm not too far away. And in fact, this guy will do it. Well, do I dare to do this? See, I have a tendency to hold on to my leadership cards when I really should just be burning them so I can get the two movement points and get some action done. There is some attack here, but that would be three, four, five attack. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Move, move, boom, and attack. Now, this is the part that's interesting. Um, I can't kill it with range. But the block is a three. That block is a two. So I could do this block down here. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to block him. And so his color drained out. So that shows that he's not attacking anymore. And uh, we gotta we gotta kill him now. So he needs five damage. And that's my issue. I can't do that. I gotta undo the block. So now if I undo the block it's showing that I'll take two damage. And that's what I gotta do. And here's why. I gotta apply two attack. Click on him. See, I got two out of five. Then I got to do three attack. And I have to do it by doing this. So I got the green crystal and the white mana. And then I do this. It spends the white mana from here. And I got my three attack. I want to be able to kill him. I mean, blocking him doesn't do me any good. And uh, I also want to gain a crystal. Let's use this card while we can before I end the turn. Which crystal would I like? I, I need a lot of crystals, of course, in this game. Uh, but I think I'm going to go ahead and take a, a green. And here we go. So we won. Campfire. Now we can add one more follower. And our armor increased by one. Which, that just means, I mean, uh, in that last case, uh, where he had three attack, we took two wounds. Now we're only going to take one wound. Because you always get one wound if you can't block his attack. No matter what, you gain a wound. But then his three would be minus our three, which is zero, and we would take no more wounds after that. If he does four damage, then of course we would take two wounds. And in the case of the five damage situation, it'd be a wound. 5 minus 3 is 2, a second wound, 2 minus 3 is 0, no more wounds. So 2 wounds, even if it's a 5 damage attack. So, very, very cool. Um, and it's showing that I have 2 bloods, 2 wounds in my hand, 2 wounds in my discard, and 2 in my deck. So, I have a lot of wounds right now. Uh, my deck is getting clogged up. So now I have 3 wounds. And the village does heal wounds for leadership. Which, if I had the wounds at the time, I could have used my leadership cards to uh, to deal with that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and press on. So let's go and... So the first thing I'm going to do is my follower has a heal too. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to use... I don't think it matters. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and use this one. 
hold on. What was I going to do? Yes. We could use this one. And then, boom. And even though you can't see it, two of the wound cards went away. So that part was good. We can recruit a follower if I go back. Do I want to go back is the question. It's nighttime. We want to push through this while we can. The desert is five movement points during the day. So my answer is I want to push. Uh, as much as it's nice to go back, Mage Knight's the kind of game, and for those of you who are familiar with it, um, you sort of have to like do your thing and then get out of dodge and keep moving. Like If you slow down and you turtle, the, the game just never lets you catch back up sometimes. Um, so I think we got to keep moving. I would have liked to have taken this Spire, but I don't have the leadership to gain a spell anyways. Um, if I do conquer it, though, uh, I get a spell. So uh, you do get one for free, and um, of course that's where you can recruit followers. Okay, so let's move on. I'm going to do this one where I can add plus two to an effect, and we're going to go ahead and do it for the movement. And we're going to use one of our crystals, activate it, and then I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Oh, I think I have to drag it on the card. There we go. So I dragged that effect onto the card, and now I should have six movement. And right there it is. So three, six, just like that. And then we'll go ahead and end our turn. So we drew some more wounds, which stinks, but it is what it is. Um, we got a whole bunch of green. We need a blue to be able to gain a spell. I would really like to use this and get some spells. That's the whole reason I did this. Getting spells early in the game, even though it goes in a discard pile, we'll be able to use it later in future rounds. So the earlier we get it, the better. But that's not the case here. We could rest to get rid of these wounds. They're saying we have four turns left. There's seven cards in the deck. Sure, I'll rest. That's right, I gotta discard something. And here we go. Uh, it really stunk that I discarded something that had movement points. But um, we're going to go ahead and do two move here. And then click on this space here. And that revealed the tile. So here you can see that's a crack, which was like a, what was it, like a fortress thing in Mage Knight. It's equivalent of those. Uh, the little, This is the maze which I think uh, you might find familiar. And then, of course, there's another village, right? So there was no need to go backwards. We can always go forward. And then, of course, a mine. Now, our biggest issue is... Uh, I don't have the ability to heal anymore. Or I, I don't have the wounds anymore. Um, that's what I meant to say. Uh, and all the wounds are in my discard pile. So I, I don't think you can heal wounds from your discard pile. And him. Yeah, I don't think either of them can heal from the his discard pile. So uh, we could, let's look at our market for the spells. There's a red one. Ah. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we're going to play... Oh, I don't have blue. I need blue. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. I'm sorry. I need blue. So how do I get a blue crystal or a blue anything? The only way to do that is to spend a crystal. I can draw two cards or gain a green crystal, or refresh a follower. Uh, refreshing a follower 
is nice, but our follower all he does is heal us, and all the heal, all the stuff is gone. But drawing two cards, I can maybe do that, or I could just gain a crystal for it. Um, let's draw two cards. And we're going to take it from the mana pool. And let's activate this. And there's our two cards. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we got ourselves some movement points. What do we want to do with it? I don't know if we can attack this thing. It does have one guardian. problem is, is I have the red stuff here but I've already used my mana I can't use another mana so whatever's in there I only have attack two and attack two <laughs> that's it I would have to burn two cards just to get in there and so I have two four five attack at most I could face something in there that has seven. Oh, Nelly. You can pillage villages to draw two additional cards. I usually never do that. But if you play as that one character that, that's got the evil thing, <laughs> that's definitely what you should do. <laughs> the uh, Maze Dwellers, um, you do have to fight a battle and uh, you can see here that there's like if you spend two movement point at the antechamber you're gonna get two mana crystals if you spend four movement points you get um, that's a spell card and then six mana points will get you a relic card now it's not only do you have to spend six movement points but you also have to come to battle whatever that abomination is and the abominations are end game stuff so it's pretty tough but it is just one of them, so, you know, there's something to be said there. I, I'm torn. I don't know what to do. So I think I'm going to spend move two and move two. And I'm at least going to do that. Position ourselves to try to fight this maybe next turn. And we're going to go ahead and end the turn. Oh, we got a gold mana. Oh, it's depleted because it's nighttime. Oh, you jerks. All right, so here we are. I feel like I'm not going to get to use this spell card thing. Can discard another card to get three movement. And then I can go in and attack. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to gain three movement, and we're going to go ahead and discard this one. You know what? We'll discard that one, because I, I don't think... Oh, the moment I do, I'm going to regret it. We'll do this one. And here we go. We're going to go ahead and assault the fortress. Alright, so they're showing that it has fortified, which just means we can't do range attack. Uh, the quick is it takes, so you can see he's doing a 4 damage attack. It's going to take 8 block to block the attack. So all that means is we're going to go ahead and take our wounds. So I'm okay with that. Um, uh, this is a game you have to not be afraid to take wounds. At least for, you, have to, you still have to be smart about it, but, but taking wounds is not a bad thing. You just have to have a way to mitigate that or handle it. Okay, uh, our followers burned up. We still have an empty slot, and now we got to finish this guy off. But you can see here he just has four armor. Uh, this is pretty easy. We're just gonna do a four damage attack, and just like that, it's over. So he wasn't too bad at all.
We did gain two more wounds. No, no discard. We got a hand size of plus one due to being there. And then we activated our, our, our deck was zero, so we activated our card. So now we just three new cards added to, oh, added to the deck. Uh, that was gonna be to our hand. So here we are. Uh, we don't really have much of anything. We still didn't get the blue token we're looking for. The follower here is a really nice one. I'd love to get him. And you can see I only have one leadership. And the cards that we have, I can only get two more leadership from the cards. I don't even have movement or anything. So uh, this blows. But I have to end my turn because the wounds are... Uh, the deck was empty. So I'm going to end my turn. I have to discard something. So they're announcing uh, end of round. So this is the last turn of the game. And uh, we still don't have the blue because I never did anything. So this was a complete waste uh, of getting that card and trying to hold on to that card. However, I have a boatload of movement here. So let's, let's use one. We're going to go ahead and burn the green mana here. I'm pretty sure that yeah, that's burned up. So I'm going to use the uh, green mana here to get four movement. And we're going to explore a new tile. So we got another one. So we can take another one if we want. Uh, I don't think I can do that with move cards at the moment. And then this is a hallowed site, which there is a battle there. I don't know what it's the equivalent of. Um, but... Uh, it's what, I think it's the one where it's random. Sometimes you have to discard mana, sometimes you do a battle. And you don't know which one it's going to be until you go in. I think that was the pyramids back then. I can't remember. And then, uh, again, the hideout here. An abomination is pretty, pretty big. A guardian, as you saw, wasn't too bad. So, yeah, we got movement points this is our last turn so we got to do something I think if we are if we stay here or we're adjacent to here uh, we get an extra card uh, we also get to recruit followers and you can see I have two movement points left I don't think I'm ready for this at all this is just too hard in the early ones I'm concerned I don't have a very good start here. So here's my dilemma. I can use my movement points to get further along, which will allow me to maybe attack the hideout, right, in the daytime. I'll get one extra card at the start of my next turn, and that'll let me attack the hideout, and all is wonderful with the world. It'll be daylight, so this five woods will actually turn into three, so then I can move through and keep unlocking tiles. The other thing I can do is just stay here because I have a slot to recruit one more person. And so the idea here is if I can recruit one more person, then, um, sorry, I dropped my mouse. If I can recruit one more person, then that might help me with my, uh, my future battles. So I'm not doing so bad. That is a, a very attractive option. But I don't know if I'll have my leadership cards at the start of the next round. <sighs> ah. Well, if I start with my leadership, then I'll just take this. That's what I'll do. So let's go ahead and move. And I don't have enough to do more, so I'm going to go ahead and end the turn. So we're going to sleep, and now it's daytime. We can take another turn. Yeah, let's 
do that. All right, so we drew two of our uh, wounds right away, and we started with a heal card. So that's actually not a bad option. Uh, we only have a green crystal, unfortunately. Don't have the blues. Boy, we need those blue crystals. I, I need to make sure. And we did start with one of our leadership cards, although this one's a crappy one because you have to discard another card to use it. And as much as that sounds like that shouldn't be painful, it always is. So I can heal one, but I don't want to. So let's heal two. is a great feeling to get rid of two. So I would love to attack either of these actually, but at the moment I feel like I'm I'm stuck because uh, I got a, um, now we can look at the market. I forgot to do that. The abilities are pretty good. Like this regeneration, I like it. Uh, this one, ice manipulation, very nice. Uh, I don't know, I don't really care for the sacrifice stuff. Spells. This cloud kill is an awesome one. Uh, target enemy does not attack. I mean, that's an amazing one. This is also good. Fire artillery. And then, of course, uh, the followers. We're still getting the silver ones at the moment. But, uh, you know, the pacifier with the leadership of four. Not awful. Target's not fortified anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. If it's an unfortified enemy, they cannot attack. That's good. A siege attack of four is pretty good for a low-level person. So this Plague Doctor, you know, would be really good. And even this one, although uh, the Scoundrel gives me reputation hits, and I'm trying to trying to not do that. So I'm going to have three cards. I'll be able to draw two more if I end my turn now. But I'm going to do this first. And we're going to turn... Turn a red one or a white one? Let's turn the white one. This always throws me off because I want to say yes, but I don't want to discard cards, so I'm going to say no. And by the way, if you ever make the mistake and say yes, you can, get, you can back out of it. The designer does a good job there. All right, so we got two wounds in our hand again. Uh... <laughs> That, I mean, it hurts from the perspective that um, we keep trying to mount a hand so we can attack. But two wounds in our hand, if we ever had a green again, which we don't, uh, we could, our follower here can heal. And of course we can gain a green. Let's see, what what is this? There we go. Gain a green crystal and a white mana. I don't want to waste that white mana. But we could do it. Oh, what a waste. But I'm going to do it. So I have the green crystal. Let's heal two. I hate this, but I, I'm ending my turn again. And... How would I use my... Like, I want to take another turn. Here. If I do this... Once this round, you can activate... To take another turn immediately after your current turn. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that, that way the, the other player is not... Um, uh, the ghost player is not drawing cards. Because remember, they, they can end the game on us. I still have 13 cards in my deck, so and I'm wasting so many turns, you know, just trying to to get rid of these wounds. So I do have to discard something. We're gonna discard that one, and here we go. We finally got six cards, although one of them's a leadership one. Uh, nothing's really uh, meant to attack very well here. I got an attack too. Whippity-doo. 
the tech two is not going to do it, folks. Well, what I can do is move back and then let's recruit. Oh no, it's just him. Oh. That other guy that was really nice isn't there anymore. Uh, this is where the restart turn comes in. Because if you were playing a board game, you would have known that that. So, or you would have to be smart to go here first. I needed to be at the temple for these other guys. So I don't even think we've found a temple yet. This is a temple. Nope, that's not a temple either. Nope. It, it's a blue thing that looks like this, but it's a stone that sort of spirals up in the sky. Okay. Um, I would have to spend two of these cards. I'd have two attack, three attack, four attack at most against whatever I'm going up against in there. Four attack is not enough. And here's my problem. I'm stuck. I have to attack or attack to get out of this situation. <laughs> oh, you guys are jerks. Uh, I mean, this is suicide, but I guess I could always just restart my turn. I don't want to spend a white crystal on this, even though that's pretty cool. All right, so we'll use a two, and we'll make this a one. And there he is. Oh, yeah, that's right, because we're next to them. We get to see what's in there. See, look, that has seven armor. I have to do seven damage to this guy. Seven, folks. I, I don't have seven damage worth of cards. This one I won't know until I enter. Oh, he's going to be worse. He has to be. Oh, you got to you even have to enter. This is like a dungeon. Oh, look, he only has 4. We can handle 4. But she's going to like paralyze me or something. No. Oh, he's got physical immunity. So we need 8 damage against him. That's not going to work. <laughs> We're not going to be able to do eight. Look at this. Oh, I'm playing a crappy game, folks. This is not going well. I, I can't... Look, I, I can't hurt him. I can do uh, attack two, sure. But see, he has physical resistance. So even though he has four armor, this is only going to do one damage. And I can only do... If I sacrifice two more cards, that's two more damage. That's it. Wow. I gotta restart my turn. And I can't believe I'm doing this, but I have to end my turn. And I need to discard cards. So I like these, but I need to get rid of This one and this one. You could argue I should get rid of more, like this one. But I want to be able to recruit once I, uh, although there's nothing to recruit. Yeah, we'll get rid of all three. And there we go. We got some attack cards now, so let's go. I don't have any crystals. So we got to move two. And we'll move to again. Assault. Attack. Attack. I'm 
just barely going to pull this off. Two, six, eight. There it is. And we're one experience away, and that, that leadership thing would have helped me because it gave me an experience point. So we got the two wounds in our hand. We got this mana card. Oh, look, we got the blue. Let's do this. Yeah, so we can't... We can recruit this guy, but he's not going to be super good unless you want to use him for block. And we could, but the leadership cost is more. Actually, our reputation is pretty decent for him. Okay, so a couple things uh, that's going on here. The first one is we want to play this. And we want to get a spell card from the spell deck. So what spells are there? This white one is super awesome, but so is the red one. They're both fantastic. Um, a siege fire attack of eight, even if you have to take a wound, is amazingly good. So um, this one can kill an enemy without him getting a chance to attack. Whereas this one, you can... Well, you can destroy them, but you need black mana. Well, this one needs black mana, too. Black mana is hard to find. So you have to range attack an enemy. Sometimes a lot of them are fortified, especially the citadel ones, so it's not as helpful. This one, if you have an enemy that paralyzes you, you, you lose your entire hand. So you can't ever let a paralyzed enemy hit you. You have to block them, or you do this and prevent them from attacking. Levitate's nice, but... um. The other two are better. So let's go ahead and do this. And there's the issue. We don't. We could do the white crystal to get the uh, the white card, which I did say was better. But I'm going to go ahead and do the red crystal because that's in the mana pool. And oh, we could have done a gold one, but we'll do the red one. Oh, can't do that can't do that folks it has to be the white one it has to be this one because that's the way the spell works because it's using the blue from the mana pool and we're going to activate and we can take levitate or cloud kill we're going to take cloud kill all right so let's um generate some movement Reveal the next tile. So we got another crack. Here's a spire. I really would like to take one of those. Um, if I moved, so I can move like down this way and then I can come over here and reveal more tiles. You can see it's showing like the edge of the board here. And that's not a, a super bad idea. Uh, this thing, though, is a dungeon, and it's awful. It's nighttime no matter what, and there's an abomination in there, which is not an easy thing. So actually, I couldn't move down there, because i got to go through one of these. And it's going to take four movement points. Oh, come on. i got two wounds in my hand. i got a wife and five kids to feed. Come on. Oh, I am... I'm just blocked in, folks. This was not the way to go. This was not the way. I'm completely hemmed in, and I can't... can't do anything about it. Wow. Absolutely well. Do I really go backwards? I mean, that just blows my mind that I would go backwards. Oh my goodness. I gotta end my 
my turn again. Two rounds left. There's only two cards left in the deck. This is awful. I'm just going to sleep. I have to end the round. Wow, that whole second round was a complete waste. That that was brutal. Okay, I want to put one card in my hand. Oh, I must have drawn it. <laughs> I must have drawn it. I I can't see it. I was looking for the one that uh, causes them to... Uh, can I see my hand? It would be nice to see my hand before I made this choice. Oh... I think we want we want to attack. I want something that attacks. So let's go ahead and do that. And we get to draw two more because we're next to both of the cracks. Hey, taking the crack was at least a good thing. <laughs> I'm going to get adult censored on YouTube for saying taking the crack. Um, okay. Um, this is good. This cloud kill was the card I was looking for. But, look, I don't have white mana. So... That stinks. And I don't have a crystal, so I can't use this to gain a spell, like I was talking about doing. Oh, where was my spell card? Oh, this was my spell. I, I thought I took the red one. I, I apologize. I thought I took the red one. Okay, um... So I can't use this to make an enemy not attack. It takes white mana to use even the top one. So that part blows. I can't use these attack fours because there's no red. Oh boy, am I in trouble. Um, but I think I still got this. So I'm going to play a move and a move. Yes. And we're going to attack this guy. And yes, we're going to enter. So I do need eight. And I'm not going to be able to block him. So I'm not even going to try to do that. Uh, so we're going to take two more wounds. But I'm going to go ahead and play this one. And we're going to do the this for the green. And that lets me activate this with a plus two. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to drag it down. We're going to activate this. And now that becomes a six. So we're only one away. And then all I need to do is use the top action of this card. Boom. And look at that, we leveled up, and we go to after battle. Alright, so we're going to get a random crystal, which we need more crystals. In fact, um, that guy with the um, the magic user one, I just realized that's my favorite character. I keep this is, Captain Picard with the leadership is my favorite character when I'm playing um, the Star Trek version of Mage Knight. Um, but I just forgot that this one that uh, has the um, the cloak uh, is my favorite because I, I realized I'm a crystal monger. I want crystals. I, I want to make crystals. I want to be able to produce crystals. It's it's the way I play this game. Anyways, we just gained a red and a blue. And we leveled up. So we get an action card. So here we go. We can gain a blue crystal. Uh, which would be actually quite nice. Or leadership can be used to block. That is also impressive, but I would rather have this. And then, what do we, oh, this Spirited March is so valuable. Teleport one space away for free, or two spaces away for two movement. Oh. 
That can be huge if the space is like a five pointer. But see, see this little square here? This is once per day or night. I get to use this every turn. Now this only works if you have followers. It's still really good. We'll take it. Okay, so here we are. We drew two wounds, or we gained two wounds. Um, the followers are in the village. Uh, the one in the crack is actually really good. I, uh, I need to get those yellow cards out, so that way I can get the better followers to show up. Alright, um, here's our cards. Let's explore. We got our crystals. Oh no, let's look at our spells here. We got three choices. The one we were eyeing up before. Fire attack five or fire block seven. And that's a freebie. Um, this is range fire attack five, which doesn't always do me anything because every time you're attacking a citadel, they, they block range attack. This one, ignore the fortifications, which lets you do range attack. And the enemies get minus one armor, which is nice. Because if they have uh, resistance, minus one armor is pretty good. This one seems more versatile. And then plus two per enemy faced. Also seems more versatile. I'm going to go ahead and take this one in the middle. And I'm sitting here like a goober thinking, yeah, 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 why won't it give it to me? Because I have to explore first. And then I have to do this. And we're going to gain a red. Oh, i got to spend both of my crystals if I do this. No, I don't. I'm going to spend one crystal and the blue mana activate. And we're going to get this guy in the middle. Boom. Done. Now I don't have any movement, although I got this guy right here. So I gained one movement point, as you can see, because I only have one follower at the moment, and I need five points to get through this. I should have taken the thing that lets me... <laughs> <laughs> move one space because that five points is going to be so hard for me to get through uh, I'm going to undo my turn I still want to do what I just did but I need to do something else first. I need to do this. And this. I didn't need to do that. Okay. I will get it right. I'm, I'm getting a little tired. But uh, I'm going to do this. I already have two green mana there. I'm going to come up here and heal my two wounds. So I got rid of those wounds that were in my hand. That's what I'm going to do. And now I can end my turn. Oh, I have to set, discard a card. So now I get some nice attack cards and no move cards. I, I'm just so screwed in this game. I look, we're we're doing fine, folks, but I'm wasting way too many turns. Like I should have had, one, two, at least two more tiles revealed. We, because look, there's still a green tile left. I need to reveal, and then I need to reveal a yellow tile. First of all, to get the first citadel out, but secondly, so we can get the nicer recruits. Recruiting these silver guys is not where you win. Um. Ah, it hurts. But yeah, let's go ahead and do it. <coughs> <coughs> I 
definitely got some nice spells. I can't argue with that. I can't even generate enough movement with my remaining cards to go anywhere. I need three... I'd have to spend all three cards just to move back to here, which doesn't pull me in the right direction. Unless you think I can take this dungeon. I, I really want to go to here. Ay ay ay. Maybe I want to discard cards. Yeah, let's discard one, two. I like the idea of getting a blue crystal. So we'll discard. I should have played this card last turn. That was my mistake. Alright, we at least got a move card, but it's not much. Alright, I'm going to do that. We'll gain our blue crystal. We can... Oh, we're not even going to get any movement. Because we don't... We don't have any followers! Oh! Yeah, I know, I'm... I'm pal I, this is, uh... This is me failing like mad. Two, three, four, five. I gotta do it. There's only one turn left. Alright, here we go. Move to that's green stuff, which is fine. Move to move to and there she be. So we have a dungeon and then this is a tomb, which is like worse than a dungeon. <laughs> and we gotta go through it if we wanna go into this tile. Oh, <laughs>